Uh, hey, Pastor Jeff, we're here week three uh, of Unpossible. You just finished your sermon, yeah. which uh, you kind of noted that this is probably the most difficult one to yeah. really comprehend, to grasp, to really see. And you talk about a story uh, about a college student coming up to you and really saying, hey, what, what's the deal with God always wanting the glory? Why is he a, a glory addict? Yeah. And I thought that story is great. And if you want yeah. to elaborate on that. Yeah, that, the, the, the idea of God's glory is so mm -hmm. confusing to us. Yeah. For, first of all, because we use the word glory differently. Mm -hmm. And doxa, glory mm -hmm. in, the, in the New Testament, and also glory in the Old Testament, kind of streamline each other. Yeah. And meaning this, that when God speaks of his glory, it's, he's, he's speaking of uh, what you put ultimate worth in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are other things in our lives we give worth, and it's okay. Right. I give worth to my wife. I give worth to my marriage. I give worth yeah. to my hobby. Mm -hmm. I give worth to a good cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, but when God talks about glory, when He talks about His glory, He's talking about all of His attributes, which mm -hmm. gives Him, and it's going to bother us, but it gives Him the right because of all of His knowledge and His mm -hmm. wisdom and His power and love and love. Yeah it gives him the right to pull us toward him. Mm -hmm. Because like a father would a son, and I use this example, you know, if, if, yeah. if my son has some kind of illness or something he's facing and I have the remedy, I want my son to honor, mm -hmm. to, to hold me in high regard, my right. words to him, because mm -hmm. my words will save him. Mm -hmm. The imposters or counterfeits yeah. may lead him down a road that leads to death instead of life. Mm -hmm. So. Once you know and understand that God is love, not just because it's an action that He performs, but it's who He is in His essence. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to say God is, in, God is incapable of not loving, but that, you can't go that route. Right. You just say that the nature of God is love. It's, mm -hmm. He exudes with love. And so we're created for that love relationship. And then it becomes father and son or daughter. Yeah. The whole course of our life, God is trying to get us to glorify Him, not in the sense that, hey, if you don't glorify me, I'm going to get you. Right. But glorify Him in the sense that He knows our best life will be when we give our ultimate things. Not, you know, people get confused. They, 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 they think that God doesn't want us to enjoy each other. Right. And He doesn't want us to love each other. Yeah. He doesn't want me to get married and have a great time. You know, he didn't, yeah. no, that's, that's a bad thing. Because I grew up in a church really where fun was frowned on. Uh -huh. We had no real philosophy of fun. The only philosophy of fun we have, don't have it. And especially don't have it when you're in the church. Yeah. yeah. That's what I grew up in the 70s. Right. You can't, you know, smiling, no laughing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the pastor gave humor, it was like, okay, don't go too far there. Right. We're in the house right. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you look at what Jesus, look at the times in Jesus' ministry when he was overjoyed yeah. because of, of good winning over evil, mm -hmm. this cosmic good defeating evil. So God looks at us and the whole course of our life is to draw us to himself because he knows he's the one that will give us all that we're looking for. Like he's our father, mm -hmm. we're his children. So he has to take us through the course of our life where we glorify other things, ultimate things. Now we're mm -hmm. still gonna glory in other things, which is fine, right. but ultimate glory, if mm -hmm. it's given to any other thing than God, it will always leave us wanting. Mm -hmm. And when we have a desire that is met, Again, I said all desires are given to us because God has a legitimate way to meet that desire. Mm -hmm. If you start getting that desire met, met by illegitimate ways, it mm -hmm. creates insatiable lusts. In right. other words, you want more and more of the same right. thing, it becomes an addiction. Mm -hmm. But the whole process of your life is God, and He's so loving. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, God looks at Drew and He looks at Jeff, I know you guys are going to go over there and try that. <laughs> yeah. I've told you not to. Yeah. I love you. Just like when you, I mean, if, if my son Delaney yeah. did something stupid, how, how long would I be patient with him? Probably until I get him back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think when we go so much here, Drew, I mean, yeah, yeah, right. let, let, let's get serious here for yeah. a second. Right now we're in a culture where a lot of young men and women are really struggling, even with mm -hmm. sexuality and identity. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say be careful how you view people who are struggling in that area. You mm -hmm. think because you're not, somehow God loves you more and you're, you know, you're type. Here, let me tell you how God sees that. That's my son and daughter. They're going to try. I, I love them, mm -hmm. and I know that some of them are going to have to try these things. And I'm going to. I'm, I'm not going to give up on them. Yeah. I'm not going. To, I'm going to stay right here with them, mm -hmm. and I'm going to keep frustrating them. Mm -hmm. And so, hope one day they'll remember something mom or dad said. Mm -hmm. Just turn to God. Come as you are. Yeah. And if you live His way, I'm telling you that's where your ultimate peace, yeah. joy, and comfort will be in Him. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Don't glory something more ultimately or ultimately 
over and against God. Give, mm -hmm. give Him the ultimate glory. So if I've got a need, because all of us have them, if we've got something that we have great consternation in and we're suffering and we, we look at the Christian way and we just say, you know, that's just not going to work. I know what the Bible says and I know what my friends are telling me. I don't feel that. Mm -hmm. Then what I'm suggesting to you is try it. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you're going to try all these things. Right. And God's still going to love you. Mm -hmm. And He's going to chase yeah. you. The hound of heaven, Francis yeah. Thompson, is called God. Mm -hmm. He's going to chase you in hopes that one day you come and you find out, I can give you what you're looking for. I really can. Right. Right. And so when we, when we talk about God being jealous, you know, if mm -hmm. you and I are jealous, it's because we want honor that somebody else is getting that we right. think we deserve. But the mm -hmm. problem is if we get the honor, we're not helping anybody. <laughs> yeah, Man's yeah. honor never helps anybody. Right. And it's, it's fickle. Mm -hmm. You might get it now. You may be on cloud nine today and a loser tomorrow. And that's why until you put your total significance, satisfaction, joy, meaning on God, it's going to be fickle and you're going to be mm -hmm. frustrated. Right. But once you give it to God, once mm -hmm. you say, man, with all my sin, I'm accepted unconditionally before God through the cross. Yeah. When you really say that and believe it, it will give you an internal peace, a shalom joy, yeah. and yeah. you will glory in God. And what's the quote by Augustine? God is the most glorified when we yeah, are most satisfied in Him. So that's what yeah. God wants. God says, mm -hmm. be satisfied in me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the ultimate glory. Yeah, and yeah. Your, your life will point other people toward that same glory. So that's kind of a yeah. long version. No, of no, no exactly. And that's exactly the quote I thought of. I remember uh, John Piper being John really, Piper. really using he that, loved that, that quote. quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, desiring God. Yes. Uh -huh. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah, a good exactly. memory, man. <laughs> Thanks. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I remember uh, when, I heard that, when I heard that, when I heard him say it, I never truly understood it. I thought, okay, let me just pursue His will, or let me, let me pursue His will, thinking that it's the things that I want yeah. rather than things that God wants. Yeah. Uh, and it was really important, and kind of what you touch on of the importance of understanding that unfortunate events can really be faith builders. Yeah, they can. Because the ups and downs of of life, if you're giving it to God, the most glory uh, will be in Him, and you can really have a satisfying, um, a satisfying life in him rather than in the in the world yeah. which i find uh, very fascinating you know i think piper i it, i was the same way it's amazing mm -hmm. you and i i mean it's amazing how generational or sorry how it penetrates the generations yeah. oh for from sure one generation to the next mm -hmm. but i remember reading that book that i didn't really understand that yet until i read yeah. the next book he wrote which i think is don't waste your life mm -hmm. right and in the book don't waste your life i put the two and two together he's saying mm -hmm. you're going to spend your whole life chasing all these things yeah, and yeah. what a waste yeah and yeah, if yeah. you don't discover it until the end oh man then you're going to say oh man Man, I could have exactly. had this life all along. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so that really spoke to me, especially the last few, the last chapter of that book when mm -hmm. he asks you simply, what are you going to do with your life? What are you yeah. really going to do with it? And I've always told my son, son and my daughter, don't make a decision about your career based on how much money you make because mm -hmm. you'll never be happy. You might make right. the money, but you'll be frustrated. But if you're doing something that you really love and you're getting paid for it, yeah. best life. Yeah. And it's, just, it's kind of our relationship with God. You know, right. whatever you're doing, if you're doing it, for Him, yeah. no mm -hmm. matter what it is. If ultimately you want to glorify Him through whatever you're doing, you'll have the best life through your successes yeah. and failures because mm -hmm. you know, well, here's the thing. I guess this failure glorifies God as much right. as this success. Yeah, and, yeah. And He's got a way of turning all that and using it and working it together. Oh, 100%. And uh, you will always talk about the story with Tony Bennett, and I think that's a prime example a good story. <laughs> of really understanding of being at a place where you should have been so successful uh, in the world, but it didn't happen, but yet you are still holding the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Because those materialistic things are, are, are meaningless, really. Yeah. I want to tell, I want to tell a quick story yeah, that I yeah. haven't been able to tell, but I can tell it now. There's some mm -hmm. things I have to wait for right, permission right, on. Right. There's a famous basketball coach, really famous. Now I'll leave the name out. Yeah. Really famous, who did something really stupid. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it made the news and it was, I mean, we're talking about one of the top 10 coaches of all time yeah. in college basketball. This was years ago, mm -hmm. and when he did it, you know, he just, it was embarrassment on the front page of the news, and you know, he's going to, you know, have to go to court, lose his job, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. He talks about a year after that when he'd gone through it, and now he's at another place. The only person who called him was Tony Bennett. Really? Now, you think about this. Yeah. And he said, you know what Tony Bennett said to me? He said, man, I don't know what you're going through, mm -hmm. but I can tell you this. This is a time to ask yourself about your faith and what you really believe because there's one who can sustain you even through this. Whoa. And for him to remember that Tony said that, now if you go Google that, you'll find it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. up to you. Yeah, right, right. But I thought, Tony Bennett's a class act. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, because you, usually Christians say, oh, yeah, look what you did. Right. You're right, a right. terrible person. Yeah. 
not telling him, he picks up the phone, yeah. man, we're all, we're all sinners. Let me right. talk to this guy. Yeah, Let me exactly. encourage him. And he'll never forget that. Yeah, yeah. Like, Coach will never forget that yeah. who, who called him, and, and that's when Tony was right at the top because I think mm -hmm. either be the year before, or the year after, they had won the national title. Okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's not like it's a nobody calling you. Right, this is somebody right. taking a risk. Yeah, and I'll never forget that yeah. when I read that. Tony didn't tell me that. I read that in the, oh, in the, that's in the cool. journal, and I then I called Tony. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> man, way to go! Yeah, <laughs> I said I'm. I said I got to be like you someday because I came, <laughs> my first inclination would have been called him and tell him, "You idiot! <laughs> what are you doing? Why would you do that?" Right, exactly. But, but he re he recovered because of that encouragement, mm -hmm. and right. he's doing well now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just I think that's why as you get older, you become such more a person of uh, you try the best you can. Right. Hey, let's work this out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If we possibly can, mm -hmm. exactly. let's see if we can work this out. Yeah. And, and so what a what a prime example of. Somebody being at the top of their game, mm. coming down to somebody who's at the lowest of their exactly. game, exactly, and saying you can get out of exactly. this. Exactly, like like there's a there's a way out. And what an example of our heavenly Father, yeah. literally stepping down and saying, "I'm going to send my Son for you because you can get out of this lowly place." Oh, man. You know, and and how amazing that is to where, once we accept Christ, once we accept uh, His grace and His love and all of those things. That's when God gets the most glory yeah. because it's never, it's not about us, right? Yeah. It's not about us. I've, I've tried for my entire life to learn how to communicate that to people. Mm -hmm. The God you're thinking about is something, that, some, you know, projection that you've either given right. made on to God or that, or somebody's told you. Because mm -hmm. if you knew this God of how, how deep, and yeah. deep and wide mm -hmm. and patient His love mm -hmm. is for you and what He really wants the best for you, if you really, when you come to know that, yeah. everything will change. Right. The, the, the struggle we have today is that when I use the example of Father, mm -hmm. there are just so many people who don't have a good relationship with dads. Right. So when right. that's when culture breaks down. Yeah. Because now, if, if I'm trying to tell you God is your father, for some people say, well, thanks for nothing. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, is God's like my father? I, but, so we've got to show them, look, this is not what was meant to be. Right. You, you, what you expect from your father, you mm -hmm. should have expected from your father. Yes, yeah. But there's a father that he points to. Correct. In all of his weakness and frailties, you've got one that's, you know, multiply that by infinity. Now yeah. you've got the God who yeah, loves yeah. you. Because even you, you know your father should have been different. Well, how right. do you know that? Who told you your father should be different? Mm. It's an innate thing, isn't Correct. it? Correct. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that same innate thing tells you that you've got a heavenly father that is different. Go yeah. to him. Go yeah, to him. yeah, exactly. Um, that reminds me of um, The Wounded Healer mm. by Henry Nowen. Mm -hmm. And he really, kind of a prophetic way, he kind of talks about how our gen my generation and, and probably the generation ahead of me, probably even behind me, is a, is a fatherless generation. Yeah. And a lot of people that I've been meeting uh, tell me either they have a father that they don't love yeah. because of how they've been treated or a father that they've never had. Yeah. And how important it is to always point them back to yeah. our heavenly father, the ultimate father, the, yeah. the love that you said. Because there's no perfect mm -hmm. father. Correct. Exactly. I mean, that's impossible. Yeah. yeah there yeah. are worse than others. I mean, relatively <laughs> speaking, I know, but yeah. I look at all the mistakes I made as a father, mm -hmm. but but mm -hmm. but we, I was always pointing him to one who would never let him down. Correct. And I hope he just continues on that path. Exactly. And I always think of, of my dad as well, who is a pastor and um, just the way he raised us, uh, the importance of understanding that my dad wasn't perfect, but he pointed me to yeah, the perfect yeah. father. My dad did the same. And it was like, it was yeah. so eye-opening. I'm so thankful for it. Obviously, yeah. the, now the mission is how do I teach that to people who don't have that father, oh, man. right? Don't have that father figure, but it is um, when we are satisfied in him is when he's most glorified, glorified in, yeah. in us. And yeah. I love that quote. you got to stop reading all these books, man, because I'm going to come in here and I, I'm going to be behind. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get sermons now, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I keep reading, man. Reading, like I said, where, where you read is, is, is you're going to minister out of the depth of your mm -hmm. reading. You keep reading stuff like that, man. You, you, you're going to fill this big bucket of being able to communicate those truths. And that's what I've learned. The more I read and more I understand other pastors' struggles because there's nothing new. <laughs> right, right. So if I can go to those older guys who've gone through this and, and I, I get golden nuggets out of them for how to communicate and say yeah. things. I'm very intentional. I don't yes, just kind of yeah, make yes, it so up. Of course, yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to think, okay, here's how they commuted to the Tim Keller, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, uh, Andre Nowen for yeah, sure. Yeah. Here's how they commuted to uh, uh, C.S. Lewis. Yeah. So here's yeah, how, yeah. what I can do. Oh, yeah. There's so much wisdom in uh, those type of uh, pastors and leaders. Yeah. Bible's not bad either. I'll correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Jesus they always put back. They do. They do. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They always give you clarity on what Jesus says. Yes, He's exactly. the original. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's so, all plagiarism. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and with that, I mean, it just goes back to your sermon. Uh, is um, God wants the glory, but it's not the glory in which we think. No. It is the glory in which our it's our response of what He's done for us. Yeah. 
and so I'm really excited for the yeah. next weeks to come. Man, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a tough one, but a yeah. really, really in, like, super in-depth one. Mm -hmm. One that really reaches down to the soul yeah. um, and helps us understand how good our Father is and how intentional our Father is. You know, I know we're almost out of time, but I got to say, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. This is this is my message to the the next generation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so impressed with her talent and abilities, all mm -hmm. of you guys. If I could give any piece of advice to the next generation of preachers, you guys are very gifted in stage presence. Mm -hmm. You just are, because you're a culture that grew up watching TV, movies, <laughs> right, you, yeah, and you true. get to watch, uh, what is it, uh, uh, the the 20 minutes messages that you watch. Oh, come on, what's the... Um, TED Talks. Oh, TED Talks. Yeah, you get yeah, to watch. Yeah, yeah. So you 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 get at your fingertips. Yeah. You got some of the best communicators in the world. Right. Boom. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. have that. Right. So you guys have learned through watching yeah. great communication styles. But here's mm -hmm. what you can't learn through mm -hmm. watching. Somehow, if you can remember that it's it's getting a, a crowd up mm -hmm. and excited yeah. through your demeanor is a good thing. Mm -hmm. You so so. One of the things, believe it or not, that I had to do when I was younger is learn to be more demonstrative. I know you find that hard to believe, but but I'm watching great. I did yeah. watch Charles Stanley and those right, guys, right, and right. I know. But dem demonstration without depth mm -hmm. is a short fix. Right. It's a high that goes away, and you need a, you need the drug again. Mm -hmm. But if you can combine the two by giving people things of, of, of real depth, of really concentrating and going through these circumstances and going through the struggles and the tensions of life. Mm -hmm. And if you can read and you can go before God in prayer and you can be familiar with Scripture, if you can go there, rather than just using a passage for your little pleasure, right, that right. if you can go really into a passage mm -hmm. and into the theology around it, mm -hmm. and you've got access to all these, all these resources online yeah. that we never had access to, mm -hmm. if you can give that with what God has given your generation of mm -hmm. pizzazz, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can change the world. Oh, definitely. Because there's nothing worse than, than listening to somebody who can, who's got great depth, and you're there, and after about 10 minutes, you're almost in a coma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Uh, huh? <laughs> you know, I can't stand that. But, but yeah. neither can I stand somebody yelling at me for 15 minutes saying nothing. Correct, exactly. And, and, and so take those two things together. Yeah. Uh, be true to the Word of God. Go, mm -hmm. go down in deep with right. it, and mm -hmm. then act like you really have been changed by it. Right, right. <laughs> those two yeah, things. Yeah, so that's yeah. my advice. I, have, I don't know. I don't, because I think we glorify God. We, we're given an awesome uh, privilege yeah. and a responsibility. Mm -hmm. When we do stand and we deliver the Word of God, whether we like it or not, people will often judge the impact God has on us by our demeanor, mm -hmm. by, by what they see in us. Yeah. So everybody needs to grow. The guy who's way out there needs to come here, and the guy who's way down here needs to come here. Yeah, too. Somewhere right. in that middle is exactly. the is the integrity, yeah. the character, mm -hmm. the pizzazz, you yeah. know, the the yeah. the energy, but yeah. also they know I walk away thinking, I don't walk away thinking, man, that was fun. Right, right, right. Uh, that might be one comment, but <laughs> what I walk away thinking is, man, I got to change my life. Yeah, yeah. God's changed my life. I, did, I never knew that truth before. I got to get that down yeah. deep. Exactly. It's a place of True humility, yeah. uh, true humbleness. Of you can't fake it either. You can't. You can't and, fake and, those things. And that's something you learn as you get older too, man. Yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. fake it, but man, you expose yourself every time. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so true, and, and yeah, so good. Uh, there's a lot there. Yeah. I think we can keep we'll going, but we'll time. continue. Yeah, for sure. <laughs>